Our show is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phone, Kindle Fire, and other devices with Stitcher. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or on Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Pray with me if you will. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come with the fire and burn. Come with the rain and cleanse. Come with the wind and breathe. Come with the light and reveal. Convict us, convert us, consecrate us. Claim and call us with your care and concern, O God, until we do something. Amen. Charles has already uh, told you that this is under uh, questionable authorship. It has to do with uh, the style of uh, writing. Um, it's, if it isn't Paul writing, it's uh, a disciple of Paul's writing to Timothy. Uh, it's clear that the author understands Timothy and is writing for two principal purposes. The first is to uh, encourage uh, Timothy, and the second is to warn against false teachings that are, uh, there are, are people following uh, Paul who are saying they have the absolute truth. The, um, the personal cast of the language throughout the verses uh, should not lead uh, anyone astray towards an interpretation of this passage as a simple personal statement of personal piety. It's, it's much more than that. The, uh, the grace that is uh, spoken of uh, profoundly affects um, folks. It changes lives. The, uh, the dominant pattern in uh, New Testament is um, uh, with regard to thanksgivings, which is the opening uh, part of this text, is that it's a more generic, it speaks of God. Here, the author speaks specifically of Christ Jesus. And then the final um, uh, part of it is uh, one moves from disbelieving ignorance to faithfulness, to uh, an understanding that God works in our lives. Uh, in ways uh, profound. At the heart uh, of our reading and the heart of this meditation on grace uh, is a clear conviction <clears throat> that the saving work of God transpires in and through the person of Jesus Christ. That's how lives are changed. Uh, let me see here. Paul Galloway, in a text titled... Uh, how Jesus won the West, Christianity became dominant because it offered better ideas and unexpected mercy. Uh, this is written in uh, the late 90s uh, in the Lutheran, a publication of the Lutheran Church. Um, and here's what uh, he says, um, uh, Mr. Galloway. The ultimate factor uh, in the rise of Christianity was its ideas. The simple phrase, for God so loved the world, would have puzzled an educated pagan. Sociologist uh, Rodney Stark says, the notion that gods, the gods, uh, small g, care about how we treat one another would have been dismissed as patently absurd. To the Greco-Roman world, mercy was a character flaw. Hear that. Mercy was a character. The ideal was justice, which relates to power. Since mercy involves providing unearned help or relief, it was contrary to justice, Stark adds. This was the moral climate in which Christianity taught, that mercy is one of the primary virtues, that a merciful God requires humans to be merciful. Moreover, the corollary that God, because God loves humanity, Christians may not please God unless they love one another. Remember, this is John's gospel. This commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And the other part that makes it really revolutionary is the principle that Christian love and charity must extend beyond the boundaries of family, tribe, indeed, that it must even extend beyond the Christian community. That's what revolution looks like, and that's powerful. 
So grace. Grace comes to us in a variety of ways and a variety of understandings. I don't know whether I'm, I'm remembering this correctly. It, it sounds more like Fred Beekner, the Presbyterian theologian, but I distinctly recall hearing Garth Brooks in an interview, the, the uh, singer-songwriter, talk about grace and mercy in this fashion. That grace is getting something that you don't deserve. And mercy is, getting, is not getting something that you're certain you do deserve. That's the tension between grace and mercy. So come to the, the welcome to the, the 20th century or 21st century. Um, I was channel surfing a few weeks ago, and I, I came upon a, uh, um, an episode of Every, Everybody Loves Raymond. It's based on... Uh, uh, Ray Romano's comedy. And in this episode, uh, Patricia Heaton, the, the uh, actor that uh, played his wife, he comes upon her and she is crying. And he's perplexed. He doesn't know what to do. And he says, you know, what, what can I do? And, he, and she says, no, Ray, I just felt like crying. And I had some things come to my mind and, and I was just it feels good to cry. Well, he's a guy and pretty dense, like most guys. And he uh, says, well, I, I just don't understand. Why, you know, what, what can I do? And, and she says, look, don't you have some place in your life where you, something makes you sad? And, and, and he starts to play along. And then he says, nah, I, I don't feel like crying. And she says, you just don't understand. And they leave it at that and move on to the next gag in, in the, uh, the uh, episode. But for some, grace is a good cry, a good laugh, a sunrise, a sunset. The watching uh, little ones walk, talk, and and come into full humanity. Grace comes at us at the speed of life and its cleansing. Well, here's another option for, for grace. Uh, Jeff Thomas sent me this. It's um, from his friend, uh, uh, college friend, Dr. Rager H. Moore II, Director of Choral Activities at University of Arkansas, Fort Smith. And... Uh, and here, here it is, um, the children's Bible in a nutshell, a book report. In the beginning, which occurred near the start, there was nothing but God, darkness, and some gas, the Bible says. The Lord said, the Lord thy God is one, but I think he must have been older than that. Anyway, God said, give me light, and someone did. Then God made the world. He split the Adam and made Eve. Adam and Eve were naked, but they weren't embarrassed because mirrors hadn't been invented yet. <laughs> Adam and Eve disobeyed God by eating one bad apple, so they were driven from the Garden of Eden. Not sure what they were driven in, though, because they didn't have cars. Adam and Eve had a son, Cain. He hated his brothers as long as he was able. Pretty soon, pretty soon, all of the early people died off except for Methuselah, who lived to be like a million years or something. One of the next important people was Noah, who was a good guy, but one of his kids was kind of a ham. Noah built a larger boat and put his family and some animals on it. He asked some other people to join him, but they said that they would have to take a rain check. After Noah came Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob was more famous than his brother Esau because Esau sold Jacob his birthmark in exchange for some pot roast. Jacob had a son named Joseph who wore a really bad and loud sports coat. Another important Bible guy is Moses, whose real name was Charlton Heston. 
Moses led the Israelites, and it's two separate words, Israelites, L-I-G-H-T, uh, out of Egypt and away from the evil Pharaoh after God sent ten plagues on Pharaoh's people. These plagues included frogs, mice, lice, bowels, and no cable. God led the Israelites out uh, every day uh, with Manakati. Then he gave them his top ten commandments. These include don't lie, cheat, smoke, dance, or covet your neighbor's stuff. Oh yeah, I just thought of one more. Humor their, thy father and mother. One of Moses' best helpers was Joshua, who was the first Bible guy to use spies. Joshua fought the battle of Jeritol, and and... <laughs> And the fence fell over on the town. After Joshua came David, he got to be king by killing a giant with a slingshot. He had a son named Solomon who had almost 300 wives and 500 porcupines. My, my teacher said he was wise, but that doesn't sound very wise to me. Uh, after Solomon, there were a bunch of major league prophets. One of these was Jonah, who was swallowed by a big whale and then barfed up on the shore. There were some minor league prophets, but I guess we don't have to worry about them. After the Old Testament came the New Testament. Jesus is the star of the New Testament. He was born in Bethlehem in a barn. I wish I had born in a, been born in a barn too, because my mom, mom's always saying to me, close the door, were you born in a born, barn? And it'd be nice to say to her, as a matter of fact, I was. During his life, Jesus had many arguments with sinners like the Pharisees and Republicans. Jesus, Jesus also had 12 opossums. The worst one was Judas Asparagus. Judas was so evil that they named a terrible vegetable after him. Jesus was a great man. He healed many leopards, and he even preached to some Germans on the mount. But the, but the Democrats and all those guys put Jesus on trial before Pontius the Pilate. Pilate didn't stick up for Jesus, he just washed his hands instead. Anyways, Jesus died for our sins, then came back to life again. He went up to heaven, but we'll be back at the end of the aluminum. His return is foretold in the book of Revolution. Well, it could happen, folks, it could happen. And here's the, the sweetest part about it. At the very bottom, I don't know whether this is Dr. Uh, Moore's... Uh, original thought, but it's beautiful thought. Uh, it, it gives his contact information, his phone number and all that, and then it, it closes with this, which is the most powerful and graceful element for me. Life is short. Break the rules. Forgive quickly. Kiss slowly. Love truly. Laugh uncontrollably. And never regret anything that made you smile. Folks, each and every day, there is plenty of room, plenty of time for judgment. Grace must always be the place that we come to in the end. Because if we don't, we rot from the inside out. It kills us, if not literally, spiritually have to have a note of grace. We have to find a way to sing that song of grace each and every day we draw breath. May it ever be so. Amen. Thank you for listening to the First United Methodist Church podcast, which is recorded live every week at 4832 Tahunga Avenue in North Hollywood, California and delivered by Dr. Joey McDonald. For more info on us, please check out nohofumc.com or find us on Facebook and Twitter under nohofumc. Thank you.